let's take the tulip five points one at a time and just articulate them for what they really are. Number one, total depravity. What does that mean? It means all people everywhere, without exception, are fallen, sinful, and spiritually dead and perishing without the gospel and without the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit that comes with the preaching of the gospel alone. In other words, the T in TULIP is a missionary bugle, a cry, go preach to them. They're dead. They will not live without the spiritual work of the Holy Spirit that comes in attendance on the preaching of the gospel. Go. It's a missionary point. You, unconditional election. Unconditional election means no person, no people group may claim exclusion from God's purposes because of any race or social class or education or prior creed or religion. If God has chosen whom he will unconditionally, then no conditions can be used to withhold the gospel offer or the word of hope from any people or any person. Unconditional election enforces, therefore, an indiscriminate proclamation of the gospel to all people unconditionally. The you is a missionary mandate not to exclude anybody on any condition from the proclamation of the gospel. L, limited atonement. Calvinism goes up to what Armenians believe and beyond what Armenians believe in the doctrine of the atonement. Armenians believe that Christ died for all in this sense, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever would believe, whosoever believes, would not perish but have eternal life. And I, a five-point Calvinist, yea, a seven-point Calvinist, say amen and i don't put any bar on the all or the world every individual god loves in that he sent his son such that if they would believe they would be saved that's all an armenian believes and i believe every word of it however i believe the atonement is bigger than that stronger than that more than that less limited than that. Namely, it is a covenant love demonstrating work of Christ. I believe that more was accomplished on the cross than simply the purchase of a valid offer for everyone who hears the gospel. Rather, also was purchased the new covenant promises of the heart will be taken out of his people of stone and a new heart will be put in and he will write his law upon their hearts and he will cause them to walk in his statutes and he will effectually save them. The new covenant promises made to the bride were paid for with the dowry of the blood of Jesus. And it is a tragedy in the churches, which is why I'm a Calvinist among many others, that many Christians don't know their husband's covenant love when he suffers for them. When Jesus died, he died to effectually purchase a bride. Therefore, it is a missionary doctrine. In fact, the clearest text, perhaps, on limited atonement, as it's called, or definite atonement, is a missionary text from Revelation 5, 9. Thou wast slain, and by thy blood didst ransom men for God from every tribe and people and tongue and nation. Didn't ransom every person in every 
tribe and tongue and people and nation that way. Among every people group, every tribe, every tongue, there are blood-bought people. That's a missionary doctrine. I, irresistible grace, God suffers his saving grace to be resisted. The first objection to the doctrine of irresistible grace is, of course, he can be resisted. I resist him. Or Acts 7, you stiff-necked people, you resist the Holy Spirit all day long. The doctrine of irresistible grace doesn't mean that the grace of God can't be resisted. It means God suffers it to be resisted until he decides to overcome the resistance. And when he chooses to overcome the resistance, he saves. He puts in the heart of flesh. He grants, according to 2 Timothy 2.25, repentance. He grants faith, according to Philippians 1.29. When he is pleased, he overcomes resistance. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to pray for the people I love at my church who are not believers. I don't pray, make suggestions to them. I pray, save them, triumph over their deadness. And I remember Urbana 67 with my fiance Noel. John Alexander stood up and said, 20 years ago, I said, if I believed in predestination and election and those five points, I'd never be a missionary. And now in 1967, 20 years after that, he said to us, 15,000 folks gathered there, if I didn't believe in predestination, I could never be a missionary in Pakistan. Meaning, when you get out there and you realize how hard the human heart is and how massive the obstacles are and how entrenched the resistance is. If there isn't a sovereign God to solve this, let's all go home. It is a missionary doctrine. Irresistible grace is our hope in missions. It's not a hindrance to missions. Finally, P, perseverance of the saints. God can and will sustain his missionary saints through suffering so that they go on trusting him and serving him and he will see to it that they keep believing the gospel and therefore that the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all peoples and then the end will come that's a irreversible and irrevocable promise, Matthew 24, 14. The new covenant promise that I said was purchased by the definite atoning work of Christ, the most glorious expression I know of the new covenant is Jeremiah 32, 40. I will make with them an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing them good. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts so that they will not turn away from me. That's the only way any missionaries survive. That Almighty God is pleased to put faith repentance, fear, love, and perseverance in the heart of the saints, blood bought by his own son, and awaken it afresh every morning no matter what. That's the only reason the Great Commission can be finished is the perseverance of the missionary saints. So every one of them, T-U-L-I, P means every Calvinistic church should be the most radical, risk-taking, daring, mighty, joyful, confident missionary church on the face of the globe. And if your church isn't, repent. Go home and do what you can do to change it.